Welcome to Season 3, Episode 5 of The Colors of Prague. Uh, so, uh, this is the Facebook, Podbean, and YouTube program where I uh, discuss uh, progressive rock recordings from all around the world, past and present. So, a uh, bit of a grab bag today. Um, we're going to start with Ashra Temple. The Seven Up album with Timothy Leary. Timothy Leary and Ashrod Temple, Seven Up, originally released in 1973. Nice gatefold sleeve, which opens up into some crazy stuff. <laughs> wow. And inside, and reproduced in the um, 2022 re release by MG Art is a uh, copy of the original photos that were in the uh, original release. Lyric sheet, be that as it may. And a manifesto by Timothy Leary that he attributed around the time he did this recording. So, nicely presented. And uh, it definitely falls into our progressive rock category. Ashraf Temple were formed in 1970 after Klaus Schultz left Tangerine Dream and joined guitarist and fellow keyboard experimentalist Manuel Gottstrike. They were very much... Uh, Enigmatic band labeled in the uh, kraut rock phenomena, but they also uh, had a more experimental, experimental synth-based uh, style. Uh, originally, Ashrar Temple had a male vocalist. Uh, the name attributed to him at the time was John L. And he used to be in a band called Agitation Free. Uh, so anyway, uh, Schultz set this one out. He would, in in the early years of uh, Ashrod Temple, kind of sit out some albums uh, to do his own thing, to work with other people. And from time to time, he would uh, sit in with Tangerine Dream. Uh, Steve Schroeder, who guessed it also on Tangerine Dream albums like Alpha Centauri, is here on keyboards. Although the liner notes claim uh, it was uh, recorded at a festival, I find no actual evidence of that. Instead, uh, <laughs> acid and free-thinking guru Timothy Leary, story goes, spiked the seven up the band was drinking with acid and with some added friends after all, he was a commune sect kind of guy. Uh, chanted and spoke and sang over a bunch of bluesy uh, licks until it all went way out there. Side two. Notes, 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 folks. Side two is more uh, of interest to electronic music buffs, as the music gets so out there again in a good spacey way. Uh, nearly the entire B-side of this album is all etheric, angelic vocals and soothing Larry's voice in a calm manner, saying things that make no sense. I get it. Not everyone would like this, but uh, it's certainly experimental for these years. Actually, this album was much maligned by uh, a lot of Ashbar Temple fans uh, for decades. Uh, look, I've heard all kinds of crazy stuff, uh, especially back in the 80s and 90s on Freeform, college radio. Uh, one specifically in the East Coast was WFMU, then out of uh, East Orange, New Jersey. Now they're in Jersey City. And I was introduced at that time to some of this type of music, well reintroduced, 
because I had listened to it when I was much younger, but it didn't get me until the 80s and 90s. Now, we've lost Leary, Schultz, and more recently got strength, but we have music like this to remember crazy stuff like this was recorded. Um, I think there are some samples around on YouTube that you could listen to. Um, I enjoy it. It's, it's different from uh, the usual. See, when uh, Klaus Schultz worked alone, solo, he, his, his stuff was in all kinds of different styles. Uh, percussion, percussive, always electronic, always heavily on the keyboards and electronics. But uh, he would speed up the, the rhythms, and it was just lots of out there stuff. He was very, very prolific until he died in May of 2022. He would reunite with Godstring, uh, sometimes calling themselves by their two last names, or sometimes calling themselves uh, Asherah Temple uh, over the decades. So again, um, Timothy Leary and Asherah Temple, 7-Up. Very interesting album, I would say. Um, next, we're going to Genesis. Eclectic bunch today. Selling England by the Pound. This is an original, 1973. And at this point, Genesis was Phil Collins, Michael Rutherford, Stephen Hackett, Tony Banks, and Peter Gabriel still in the band. Uh, formed in 67 in Surrey, England by Gabriel Banks Rutherford, Anthony Phillips on guitar. The first album from Genesis to Relation, that was 1969, featured uh, Jonathan Silver on percussion. He was replaced by John Mayhew for the Trespass, Trespass album and finally Phil Collins for Nursery Crime in 71. When Phil Collins joined the band, and in addition to percussion, he was on a uh, uh, vocals, lead and backing vocals, uh, which was very interesting. Genesis fans are a hardcore group. I kid you not. <laughs> um, there are many tribute bands out there, numerous in fact. And everyone's, uh, everyone who's a, a big Genesis fan seems to have a favorite album, a favorite song. I get it. Uh, there are some who really love the, the Peter Gabriel years. Um, I know the Peter Gabriel, Peter Gabriel years. This is my favorite, actually. Selling England by the Pound. All the songs tell stories. Well, it's Genesis, after all. And... Uh, but the synth synthesizers, Moog keyboards, and Hackett's distinct style of playing guitar makes it a winner. It's a bit of a quiet album, really. No rave-ups here, but it's a true progressive rock keeper and influential on many bands even today, and especially in Italy, where Genesis often toured during their early years. So what's on here? Dancing with the Moonlight, Moonlit Night? I know what you, I know what I like. Originally called "I Know What I Like in Your Wardrobe," Firth of Fifth, The Battle of Epping Forest, The Cinema Show—they're all on this album. It's it's a really quite good, quite interesting uh, Genesis album. And again, it's probably. I know a lot of people love The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, but I, I really like Selling England by the Pound, and I highly recommend it if you're not too much into Genesis and uh, or haven't listened in a while. This is a really good one. So, Selling England by the Pound. Now we're going to go over to Pomp and Circumstance. Sticks, The Grand Illusion. Um, wow, the uh, mid-70s to uh, the early 80s, there was a time where bands like Styx and Kansas and, and, and others were all over the place, and it's kind of prog rock, progressive rock, and 
pop rock and hard rock all kind of collided. And some of the, all these bands, you know, the two I, I mentioned, you know, Sticks and Kansas, they were very, very popular, very, very successful. After, you know, years of uh, wood shedding, trying, trying to become popular and um, trying to make it. And of course, you know, times change, new wave punk, all that stuff, and everybody was, even pro progressive rock had a tough time in general, <laughs> especially during this period. Um, but some bands would stay true to form and try to try to make a go of it. So, The Grand Illusion, 1977. Um, so Styx was a very interesting band that formed in 72 in the States. Actually, their debut self-titled album released in 72 called Styx is very proggy. And uh, pretty much all the way up to the Miracles album in 74, they had this very distinct sound. Heavy on the keyboards and uh, guitar and the uh, songs were long and uh, very catchy. So there was something going on with them. Um, their sound was definitely influ influenced, I would say, by the classic progressive rock bands. The Grand Illusion, released in 77, was a huge jump in popularity for them. Uh, still retaining their prog sound to a bit. This album crossed over from from that to AOR, which at the time was called Album Oriented Rock. Uh, very popular in FM radio at the time. Uh, DJs in those days wouldn't always play the hit singles uh, pushed by the label or the uh, marketing guys, the A&R A &R guys from the label. They would do deep cuts. This was way before Sirius and other forms of satellite radio. This, this was like a o uh, you know album oriented rock was like you would listen at night especially later late night DJs they they felt more freer to do that they'll play like the fourth cut deep into the to the record into the record side A that they liked but it wasn't a hit and some of those songs actually grabbed onto a noise and like you know, you're laying hey what's that you know so good for that. This was the one album that actually jumped over to AM radio. You know, remember AM radio? I think it still exists somewhere. Not just for sports broadcasts <laughs> or religious or political themed broadcasts. AM radio still might have some music somewhere out in the boondocks um, in some cities. Um, so what's on here? Title track. The Grand Illusion, Fooling Yourself, Come Sail Away, and others. Uh, James Young, Tommy Shaw, Dennis D. Young, and the rhythm section of Chuck and John P Pinozo all shine for time. Um, I'm also sure many people have forgotten Dennis D. Young uh, sang half the lead vocals but played keyboards and synthesizers. So he wasn't always the overall lead singer. He was sharing the singing uh, uh, duties. Now, I know people like other Sticks albums, and that's fine. Um, this may not be my very favorite Sticks album, but it's, it's, a, it's a very good one. So The Grand Illusion, all pomp and circumstance in the grand style of Yes and ELP, but not really like those bands. It's a good one. King Crimson, yes. Crazy stuff. This is in the wake of Poseidon. It's an original. Uh, I was found on these older albums that I have in my collection. Sometimes the record labels would try to promote uh, other records, say maybe some not so uh, well, well selling in their catalog current at the time and older so you would have these record sleeves you know where the records inside and then we have these little pictures uh, and like uh, 
Sometimes the uh, promotional artwork for albums, which is so outrageous. I mean, it's just like, look at this stuff. This is Atlantic. So Atlantic did, did a lot of cool soul, R&B, and jazz. And solid rock. And they, they were known for also being Led Zeppelin's label back in the day. So King Crimson in the wake of Poseidon comes from 1970. Incidents that led to co-founding members, drummer Michael Giles, bassist Peter Giles, to leave the band are mentioned in the uh, King Crimson documentary in the Court of the Crimson King which I reviewed uh, last show. Um, I reviewed the box set containing the documentary as well as audio content. And those incidents are sometimes mentioned in the uncomfortable manner. Greg Lake is still the vocalist on In the Wake of Poseidon, but he will leave after this album to join Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, ELP. Fripp now, here's the thing. The Giles brothers left, but Fripp retained them. <coughs> Pardon me. As well as saxophonist Mel Collins as credited session men. It's pretty weird. They were members of the band, decided to leave, but he needed them to complete this album. So they're listed, but not as main band members. Essentially, their second album, oddly, the second tomb to reprise 21st Century Schizoid Man from the previous record, Pictures of a City, it's called now, with lyrics rewritten. But then other bands would do that with King Crimson material. The Italian prog band PFM would do that also a 21st Schizoid Man. Um, I wonder if Fripp was ever aware of that. He must have been. <coughs> Pictures evolves into a noirish jazzy soundscape after the aggressive beginning. Also has cat food on here. Songs on site too. And that features a really complex time signature. Very strange recording. The Devil's Triangle at nearly 12 minutes is an all-instrumental tune. Hints at things Fripp will be doing in collaborations with Brian Eno in years to come. It's moody and goes through so many different chordal structures, it's quite something. Summed up, it's the one King Crimson album that I feel doesn't get enough love and attention until the next remix unless I missed that one. I believe there was a remix in 2016, and I believe they are remastering that in the upcoming uh, 2023. So look out for that. So in this bit of chaotic show, sorry, I have allergies. <laughs> we have uh, Timothy Leary, Ashwar Temple, 7-Up, referring to the 7-Up with acid in it. Genesis, selling England by the pound. Sticks, The Grand Illusion, and King Crimson in the wake of Poseidon. Now, why do I talk about older recordings sometimes? Maybe people aren't aware or they're like, oh, Genesis, yeah, Genesis, or uh, or Sticks. Oh, Sticks was that, that, yeah, they have that song. It's on movie soundtracks and TV shows. And, and uh, King Crimson, are too noisy for me. No, it's... I dig deep sometimes, not always doing new material, because uh, it's good to talk about, mention these albums, and uh, what may be good or bad of them. Sometimes not everything's great. But uh, anyway, this, that's the show for today. Uh, more coming soon. Thanks for watching.